Hey everyone, it's Luke here from Astro Awakening. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This video is all about Chiron. Let's look at that. Got the heavenly light above shining down on me. Um, so we've just gone through and we're still in the process of Jupiter conjunct Chiron in the sky and in Aries. I wanted to help people understand a little bit about, about what Chiron represents as an expression of consciousness. And um, there's a lot of uh, deep, rich meaning that we can pull from the mythology. Um, and when um, when you think about mythologies, what I want you to think is that what they're telling us is they're telling us a story about ourselves, but aspects of ourselves, aspects of consciousness. So there are key archetypal aspects of consciousness, just as there are key functions of consciousness. And we are partaking here in the human experience of our unique differentiated perspective of all limitless consciousness. So in astrology, you'll have the symbol for the sun, which is a circle with a dot in the middle. The circle represents, you know, the universe or all consciousness, right? Because there is no beginning and no end to a circle. And every uh, surface of the circumference of that circle is exactly the same as the next bit. So it's sort of a way to express the all always with a circle. When with the sun, with the dot in the middle of it, that's you experiencing the all from that point of view. <laughs> and just as I'm Luke in this life, was I in the last life? No. So I was experiencing consciousness from the identity that my soul had chosen in the last life. And that identity is formulated around name, the body, um, our appearance, um, and then our unique perspective of the expression of our consciousness. So with that to the side, let's dive in and look a little bit at Chiron. So the mythology of Chiron is that he was a centaur like Sagittarius. Sagittarius centaurs seem to be like the brute, you know, um, very masculine, very dominant, very assertive, brutish, um, love to drink, love to play, love to hunt. Um, whereas Chiron, the centaur, he's a gifted, wise sage, and he was a teacher to a lot of the other gods. Um, he was an astrologer. He was a doctor. He was a herbalist. He was a artist. He was a poet. He was an archer. Um, anything, you know, worth its salt, he was really, really good at. And what he was really also good at was teaching other people. So he was known as the wise centaur. Now, Chiron in astrology represents our wound, right, that we carry. And everyone's wound is different. Everyone has a wound. Um, it's just the extent of that wound that's different and how that wound expresses. Some people's wound is very deep and very embedded and it's associated to an experience or traumatic experience, um, abuse, neglect. It's really extensive. Um, and other people's wound is just a result of the way they were raised or something that happened to them, something that someone said that's stuck in their mind and it sort of, they develop this sort of wounding now with chiron in your natal chart the wounding is going to be around the expression of the archetype of the sign that chiron is in currently chiron is in aries we'll talk a little bit about what that means um so those of you that are now you know the age sort of around 48 49 50 51 ish you're having your chiron return we'll talk a little bit about that as well um so where you're wounded is the expression of that archetype um, and then where in your life you're wounded is this, the house placement of your Chiron. Now, it's very easy to just sort of generalize. There's more to it than that. You know, the sign, the house of your Chiron, key aspects it's making. And this is when you're looking at a birth chart as you determine whether someone's got a significant wound, um, whether that's deep, where that's happened, how that's happened, um, or whether it's a non-specific, generalized, and it's not necessarily part of their identity they carry it but it's not so profound as such and your birth chart can help you understand the chiron the wound the journey of the healer chiron um was a healer right which was one of his gifts he was able to heal 
um, you know, and he, he used the stars and he herbs and he used this, the phases of the moon. And, um, you know, he was really good at medicine, um, the holistic approach to medicine. Um, but he was also known as the wounded healer because um, inadvertently there was a, um, in the mythology, there was a bit of a, a brouhaha and inadvertently he was shot um, by an arrow that wasn't directed at him. And this sort of speaks volumes a lot to the type of wounds that we can happen. Now, sometimes for some people, not everyone, it's a very direct, um, you know, wound that they've received as a result of the actions of another and there was intent behind it. But quite often with the Chiron rune or the Chironic rune, wound is um, there's no intent. It's sort of just like, uh, it was like, it wasn't, you know, there was no meaning or malice or anything like that. It was just... You know, perhaps it was the way you were raised. Like I said, perhaps it was something that someone said when you were younger. So something you were prevented from doing. Perhaps it was just an insecurity of one of the parents that caused this sort of, um, you know, creating this false reality around you and created this attachment wound or um, fear of detachment type thing. So again, most of the time with the wound, it's unintentional. You know, and just like Chiron was hit with the arrow by an, un, you know, he was caught in the crossfire of another brouhaha, which he wasn't involved in. And he was sort of unintendedly hurt. Now he was hit with a poison arrow and he was unable to heal himself. And this lies into the Chironic sort of experience is that our wound, right? It's like we can go about being a certain way or being very overly compassionate, empathetic, caring, sensitive, selfless towards other people. Often it's what we're doing on an unconscious psychological level is we're trying to heal ourselves and we're doing it through helping and healing others. So this is where the wounded healer story of Chiron comes in, where we're trying to project our wound onto others. So let's say we've got a wound around valuing ourselves, our self-worth, right? We weren't valued when we grew up for who we were. We had to be someone we weren't. This speaks volumes of the um, Chiron and Taurus generation that I'm of. Um, so what we can do as a projection of that wound is we can look to others and we can raise their value. We can see them, we can value them, we can sort of express that to them and go, man, wow, and we can idolize that in them as well, specific values or skill sets that they might have. And that's where our wound is being projected. And what we're doing is we're lifting other people and we're showing them their worthiness. And, and in an unconscious psychological way, what we're trying to actually do is feel worthy ourselves. So this Chiron story about him being the healer, but unable to heal himself is like, that's our wound we carry. It's like, we can't heal that. It's like, you can't really change the past, right? Um, and the other thing about the the, the Chironic um, journey, if you like, and this is tying into the Chiron cycle, which is around 50 years. So he'll return to your natal position around 50 years, which is a key milestone in people's lives when they hit that 50 mark. You know, you could say that around 50 is where the youthfulness of life is sort of like, well, it's it's a transition now, you know, you're sort of half century. Um, but it's also a very uh, profound period of time or transitional cycle that we go through where we actually come, come of age and we can look back at our wounded journey and start to see it as part of our initiation into our full um, expression of selfhood. Um, perhaps, it, you know, our past and our story and our wound has meant that we've become really compassionate and selfless and empathetic and caring and um, perhaps that shaped our identity in some way. And this is what I want to talk about as well, is the shaping of your identity based on something that you've endured when it comes to trauma or abuse or some wound or some hurt or pain that you've experienced. And mind you, Chiron um, expressions of Chiron energy tend to happen early in life. Um, we tend to be wounded in our childhood um, where, we, where we suffer this sort of um, breakdown of the expression of that archetype through our chironic, um, you know, aspect of our chart. Um, but the key and Chiron, if we look at the symbol for Chiron, I'll show you here, the key to Chiron it's almost like he holds the key to the chart. Now, he's a, he's a comet asteroid supposedly sitting between Saturn and Uranus. Um, now, Saturn and Uranus, Saturn is the lord of time and karma and the god of this realm of Earth, right? Um, now, 
he's the last planet we can see with the naked eye. And then we move into these um, transformational generational planets of Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. We can't, they're, they're Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto aspects of the unconscious. And Chiron sits in between those two. And his symbol is the key. And the key to Chiron is not allowing the past to define you, right? Not identifying with the negative aspect of your healing journey or your hurt or your pain or your trauma. Not allowing it to shape you in a negative way, right? Not allow it to define you. If it hadn't killed you, you've endured it. You've gone through that initiation. You can't do anything about it. It's not to diminish, devalue, or dismiss the experience. It's to get the gift that it can bring from it. And the gift is to allow the past to refine you, allow it to refine you, not define you. And the way in which you do that is you realize that you are the creator of your story. You are the director, the screenwriter, the lead actor or actress of your movie. It's Luke's movie. <laughs> it's my movie. I get to write the story. So we can't change this, the past, but we can change the story. Think of any successful person that you look up to as a mentor or a figure in your life, even in popular culture or celebrity that you look towards as in, wow, what a hero. Like what's someone to really look up? And I guarantee you, if you look deeply into their past, they've had some profound pain, trauma, suffering, hurt, wound that they've experienced. And for a lot of people, it's how you transmute that into your story. And this is Chiron, how he was so gifted at so many things. It's the it, pain, the story right? The experience, the wound is the key because it can inspire you to go on to great things, to become a doctor, a philosopher, an artist, a poet, an astronomer, an astrologer, a healer, a helper, an act of service, an archerman, a strategist, all of the different things. Why? Because you're inspired, you're motivated, you're driven. Perhaps you're driven to help other people that have been like you, that have been where you've been, that have had some significant hurt, pain, trauma, or wound that they've had to go through and endure. And maybe that becomes the fuel and the fire that ignites your passion to be able to then to mold that into your identity and then use that in your life as the fuel of fire to drive you. And that's the thing with Chiron and Aries now. In Aries, what has been wounded in our essential self? Those born with Chiron in Aries, they they their wound was around you're to be seen and not heard. That was that generation of you are to be seen and not heard. You you don't get to express yourself, your beingness. So Chiron in Aries now returning is about healing that. But for everyone now, we're collectively having this Chiron and Aries and Jupiter is coming to the mix and Vesta, the goddess of the hearth, right? Which is the keeping the fire burning, the passion. And in Aries, it's like, you know, don't allow what's happening in the world. Don't allow your journey, your past to define you to the point where you can't express yourself, where you can't be yourself, where you can't allow the expression of your essential being, your selfhood. Those that have that chironic wound, quite often what they do, and not always, but quite often, um, is that they will become the pleaser. Um, they'll be, have, have a difficulty in asserting themselves and taking action. They may also project onto others' actions and see them as um, the very thing that's hurtful. Well, someone did something, someone, right? Or how did the way they did it, how they did it, Right, And you might have a projection of um, a difficulty with people that you perceive to be self-centered or selfish. In other words, in self-assured. Right? Now, there's negative expressions of that, and it can be quite arrogant, ignorant, um, and harmful and inconsiderate. 
But to be self-centered, self-assured, right, and, and self-confident with self-belief, that's, that's part of this process of individuating. You have to, right, you have to embody that to be a sovereign individuated being here, not part of the collective, in this world, not of this world. So this journey now with Chiron in Aries, it's about saying, you know what, I have just as much right to be here, to express who I am and the way I see things, but also allow other people the right to not give a fuck <laughs> or to be offended or to react however they want to react the, to you. If you can't be yourself because of fear um, of how others will respond to you, it's, it's possible you have this chironic um, Aries wound. And the, the fact of the matter is, what other people think of you, how they perceive you, their opinion of you is none of your business. If you want to make it your business, well, guess what? There's 8 billion souls on earth and, and then that, most of them are going to have a pretty shitty opinion of you because they don't fucking know you that I want to. So get over it. Don't allow others and the way they see you and perceive you to, to dull or diminish your expression of yourself. Be bold, be brave, be courageous. Jupiter, Aries, Chiron, Vesta, allow this passion in fire in you to drive you to express yourself to be huge now in this world that we live in with all this Aquarian sort of energy that especially Saturn in Aquarius that we've had to deal with for so long and this sort of shutdown of all of that identity and um, now we have this sort of you know I don't know what we want to call that with this sort of woke stuff which is like it's an aspect of like, yeah, yeah, be yourself, but take him to an extreme. It's And it's outside in the fringe. Um, and that's not a balanced way. When we go into extremes, we're not in balance. We're not in harmony, right? And that is like, well, I need everyone else. Look, I've got no problem. If you want to go off and call yourself a chick, if you're a dude or a dude of a chick, or you want to be he, they, she, may, he, him, her, hey, they, whatever you want to call yourself, cocaine. But when you need everyone else to refer you to that way and to acknowledge that and say, that's where you've got a problem because that's, that's not how the world works. So you need to get over that. That's again, if you want to be that way, I'm not suggesting not to be that way. I'm just saying you got to let go of anyone else having to see you respect that, validate that. That's not our job. It's just like when you can't be yourself because you need others to see you in a certain way or you need them to like you and you don't want to create problems. You are no longer free and independent and sovereign. You are dependent. A dependent needs an authority. It needs a parent. That's what a dependent is, right? If you're out of dependence, they, they're, they're, they're not of age yet. They haven't matured. So it's time to mature. It's time to look at your past as your point of initiation. Now, some people, it's difficult. It's hard to get over that. It's go through those three steps, I like to call it, which is understanding, acceptance, forgiveness. And you're going through that process to be able to transmute that pain, that hurt, that trauma, that wound. And I get it. For some people, it's deep and it's embedded and it's difficult and it's challenging and it's traumatic. But it's not impossible. And that's the human spirit. That's the human spirit when we are connected to divinity and love and source and heart is we have the power to transform ourselves completely, even in spite of what we've endured and what we've been through. Because right now in this moment, the only thing that exists in this moment that's associated with the past is the story you're carrying with that, right? So it's like, go through that process, heal. And we don't heal by avoiding. Now we're in Pisces season. We don't heal by avoidance. We've got to surrender to it. We've got to surrender to it, right? The, the last thing you don't want to do is identify with it. Well, that's you did that and I'm this way because of it. Because now you're using it to define your identity. And you don't want the past to define you. You want it to refine you. Um, and that's the key. And don't forget, Chiron is the key. Holds a big key to your ability to unlock your full potential and it is a journey it's called the healing journey if you're on it congratulations 
that's what we need to do in this world is heal heal ourselves heal our connection to ourselves heal our connection to this energy of the earth source to one another heal the world make it a minute the uh, some native american cultures believe that when you heal you heal seven generations of people behind you and seven generations of people ahead of you and it's an honor to be able to heal and overcome and overcome instead of allowing it to define and drag you down so i uh if you're on your journey congratulations if you're beginning your journey be bold be brave and be courageous if you need support and guidance and assistance your birth chart can unlock so much i just today had a client that i saw in uh, january this year and um she she was on holidays on the gold coast she came and saw me i'm now down here on holidays in melbourne and she came and saw me um and the profound transition that she's made in just let's say a couple of months now since january is huge when she walked in i was just like wow it's like a new person new energy and it was just some unlocking of some different things within her awareness of her patterns, her story, her past. And she's a new person and she's got so much to look forward to. Um, and she's really, really enjoying being herself for the first time in a very long time. So when I see that and I see in such a short time, the huge sort of breakthroughs and transformations of people, that fills me, that fills my cup. That's one of the reasons I do this. When I went through my healing journey, you know, it's always an ongoing thing. Um, there's always different aspects of this. But when I went through that deeply, I did it alone. I didn't do it with assistance or help or guidance. And I was doing it in a period of time where, you know, like the world hadn't gone through COVID yet. <laughs> so it was my mission once I came out the other side is like, well, that's my mission now. Is I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be in that person that's going to say, hey, you're on your journey. Here, here, let me support that. Let me bring some guidance for you. And it's your guidance because it's it's delivered from your soul's blueprint, which is your chart. So I'm honored to be able to do that. Thank you for those that are supporting me and my path. If you want to um, book in uh, for a session, an in-person session, if you're on the Gold Coast normally, or if you're anywhere in the world, um, I have clients all over the world in all different countries, and we do that via Zoom. You get a recording of the session as well. Um, we'll do some remote energetic clearing stuff as well. So if you're interested, my details will be in the comments um, in the description below. Otherwise, thank you, YouTube. See you guys real soon. Bye.